I guess later on in your, in, the, in your career, later on in Comedy Central, you get moved to marketing. And this is something that you've never really had any experience in before. And they kind of just say, oh, I can't be that hard. You'll figure it out, you know, just kind of throw you into it. And, you know, you had some, some tough situations, but you did manage to come out with some huge moments and some huge successes that still resonate today. And I guess before we move on, I, I wanted to ask, like, is Bill Maher really that much of a dick? Because he always kind of seems <laughs> like I've always thought he was kind of a pompous ass, like even on TV. And then to read about him in the book, he always he seems kind of like a dick a little bit. Well, you know, yes. But the, the thing is, <laughs> I you know, I, I don't really want to say it that way. He is like you know, some other entertainers or, or people who are in positions like that, he's, he can be very hard to deal with. And he has been very hard to deal with for other people. Now, what happens with entertainers like that is they find someone who can communicate with them and work for work yeah. with them. And he was lucky. Remember I said he found a producer? Yeah. He found a producer. Um, and naturally, I'm going to forget his name, but he uh, was is a great producer. And this guy just was able to work with Bill Maher in a way that nobody else could because Bill would like take everybody apart except this guy. He'd listen to this guy and tell him what to do and how to do it. I was not on the list of people who he would listen to. <laughs> <laughs> no, you weren't. Uh, no, you weren't because I wanted to read this excerpt uh, about a situation. You created this whole marketing campaign for politically incorrect to, you know, to get it excitement for the show and he kind of you got a call from him and i wanted to read that excerpt because i thought it was one of the best excerpts from the book um i could just fall into an orgy of apology beg bill f- to forgive me and swear that i'd never try a lame brain stunt like this again or i could stand up to him defend our ad campaign and tell him to get back to making his show i decided to start with the orgy bill you're probably right i should have he interrupted if you think this is good advertising then you obviously don't know what the fuck you're doing. I think I do my job well, but if I fucked up, my show would be canceled, right? And if you fuck up, I think you should be fired. Doesn't that sound fair? Um, Bill, I don't think, I'm letting you know that I've already made some calls and I'm trying to get you fired. Did I hear him right? As if responding to my thought, he said, that's right, Art. I'm working on getting you fired and I won't be sorry to see you go. Yeah, um, you know, they say that you remember bad things that happen to you more clearly than good things that happen to you. And as I was writing the memoir, you know, it's a memoir, so it's basically how I remember things for the most part. Uh, didn't do a lot of research. That was one of the conversations that I remember <laughs> in my own mind, word for word. I mean, I, I think I got it down exactly as it happened because it was so astonishingly horrifying at the time. Yeah. You got to remember, I was new to marketing. This was the first big thing I did. And this guy was a big deal on our channel. Not that I was nobody, but, you know. Also a guy that you helped get the show for. <laughs> it's just, well, there is that, you know, but that lasts about 30 seconds. Right? <laughs> I mean, that, that was a funny thing. I mean, after I met him, I thought he was so nice at the diner. You know, he was pitching us and everything. I think, hey, maybe I'll be pals with this guy, you know. Um, we weren't pals. But, but he came flying at me. And again, one thing that you, you sort of mentioned in that, was that I did take a little bit of um, personal responsibility. I didn't want to run the campaign by him. So I ran, I ran it by his producer, Scott Carter, his name is. I, I, I can't believe I forgot. He's a terrific, terrific guy. Uh, anyway, I ran it by Scott. I ran it by, you know, the head of pro, the guy who took over his head of programming. Um, and everybody was like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's cool. Let's do it, you know. But I didn't run it by Bill. And the reason is, because what do you think Bill would have said? He'd say, stop the presses, right? I don't care what you're doing. That's not going on. I mean, it would have just killed the whole thing. Yeah. And I didn't want to start all over because it would have all gone out the window. So I did take a little responsibility saying, man, eh, maybe I should have showed him. But uh, that's what happened. <laughs> I didn't get fired. He did not get me fired. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes, you know, working with creatives, something that we have to do a lot with our, our, with our stuff is sometimes you have to kind of make those decisions that you think are in their best interest, even if they might not see it at the time. Because later on, it turns out that you actually won an award, a marketing award for this exact ad campaign. And he was the presenter of the night to present the award to you guys. 
People have accused me of making that up. It, was just, <laughs> it sounds like a movie for sure. <laughs> you know what? If I wrote it into a script, they'd say, you got to take this out. because <laughs> it never happened. Nobody's going to believe that. Yeah, like, anyway. <laughs> it, it was totally unbelievable. Artists but um, that's what happened. Yeah. He, he was the presenter of the awards and we won for his campaign. And they, they walked by with a big billboard of his campaign. And he was like, I, I just, it was one of, one of the great moments in my, of my marketing career. I have to say. <laughs>